Hi guys, in this video we are going to look at Yasmin Vardaman's background and training. The reason why it's important to understand a little bit more about Vardaman's background and training is so that we can be analytical in our essays and we can trace back why her movement or choreographic style is the way it is based on her past experiences. So I'd like you to have a look at the images in front of you. These are um, Vardaman's works, or as she calls them, productions. I'd like you to pause the video and just have a research into when these were premiered. It's really important that you use dates in your essay and the more um, works you can bring to the discussion or just list and name, the more it shows your knowledge, which is a really good thing to um, obviously have in your essays. I want you to start thinking about her movement and choreographic style based on these works. So have a look at the images and have a think about those things, please. Okay, so Vardaman's background. So she grew up in a kibbutz in Israel and all children contributed to the labour of the kibbutz. So, for example, um, children contributed to working in cotton fields early before school or taking in turns to work in cow sheds, orange plantations, bakeries, um, and they cared for younger children. And as well as this, she spent a lot of time in children's houses when she was growing up, which were age group houses away from adults. So they had a great deal of freedom, all working together um, with a real sense of responsibility. And she says that these experiences laid the foundations for an abiding interest in and the knowledge of group dynamics. She said dealing with peer interaction from toddlerhood onwards alerted her to the positive and negative aspects of group dependency. And we see this in Justisa, for instance. The sections that take place within the therapy room deal exactly with issues of dependency, support, trust, betrayal, secrecy, fear of exposure. So these things that constantly swirl around in group relationships. So that's um, just a bit of an example of how her background has influenced her, her work. Within the kibbutz, classes included rhythmic and improvised dance as well. She learned to play the piano and she enjoyed athletics, gymnastics and long distance running. At age 14, she uh, began to attend the Alpen Menshe Dance School, where she learned ballet, modern grain technique and creative improvisation. So she had a really creative upbringing. And in 1980, she saw her first show, which was Pina Bausch's Tanz Theatre Warpital. And after school, at the age of 18, and this is really interesting, all Israelis have to spend two to three years in military service. She'd worked, she didn't want to actually do this, but she ended up working for the army for two years as a psychological interviewer. And she says that this had a significant impact on her career in dance. She became very interested in how people tell their life stories because every person has a different way to tell them. And the role that she um, had as this interviewer created a real conflict of emotion for Vardaman, um, which... She, she uses in her pieces. As well as that, her father was a theatre director and producer of a very left-wing political venue, which produced collaborative work between Israeli directors and actors. And as a teenager, this exposed her to a real artistic expression that was politically engaged and challenged her thinking and deeper awareness of things. Her piece, Echo Isn't There, in 1995, won the British Council's On the Way to London competition for young choreographers in Israel. And the winning of this is what gave her her first visit to the UK and it introduced her to a wide range of dance performances and choreographers showing their work in the season. So that's a little bit about Vardaman's background. 
In terms of Vardaman's training, we were already aware that she had had a lot of dance training from a young age in the kibbutz that she grew up. And after she um, did her compulsory military service, she was actually invited to join the kibbutz contemporary dance company by Yehuda Arnon, who... I will talk about a little bit more when we look at her specific influences. And she prepared for this offer by commencing an intensive year of training in the Sadna workshop. So a training programme that was attached to the Kibbutz Contemporary Dance Company, where she did intensive dance training in classical ballet, Graham, Cunningham and Laban. And... She was invited to perform with guest dance artist, um, as a guest dance artist, sorry, with Batsheva Dance Company by artistic director Ohad uh, Naharin. And although an enriching experience, this did not satisfy her need for greater engagement with theatrical work as her desire for creative autonomy grew and it was then that she returned to London. So she started to have a real passion for wanting to create her her own work. She did things like um, with um, the Kaputz Contemporary Dance Company um, where she did short projects in Paris and Geneva but she had a real creative desire, like I said, to create her own work, which is where then her company started when she moved to London. I would now like you to think about the following question. How did her experiences in dance have an impact upon her choreographic style? So I'd like you to make some notes on this. So, for example, how have her experiences impacted on the subject matter? How have her experience impacted on her use of dancers or her use of physical setting. So I'd like you to pause the video and make a note of all of the things that you can think of. To find out more about Yasmin Vardman, the first thing I'd say to do is to watch her interview on Vimeo. This was recorded over lockdown and she answers lots of questions around her subject matter in certain works, which give you a real contextual understanding of Vardman and her beliefs and her ethos and what she creates her works about and her influences. It also looks at the choreographic process and how her style has evolved over the last 20 years. So it's a really excellent um, thing to watch. It's 24 minutes. And then if you are aiming for an A or an A star in this written paper, I would strongly advise that you look into this book. It's really specific, really detailed, but it's really excellent. And there's a picture of it there. Okay, so enjoy learning more about Yasmin Vardaman.